So last month, Google released a paper on Tacotron 2, a neural network architecture for text-to-speech synthesis. It consists of two components, a network to convert character sequences into MEL spectrograms, and a modified version of WaveNet, which acts as a vocoder to synthesize the speech. WaveNet was introduced by Google's DeepMind in September 2016. It's used to generate the voices in Google Assistant, so, what was wrong with WaveNet? The input requires linguistic features, fundamental frequencies, and phoneme durations, all of this which requires significant domain knowledge to interpret and process. Tacotron, introduced in August 2017, alleviated this problem with sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture where the input character sequences were transformed into magnitude spectrograms. This eliminated the need for complex linguistic and acoustic input features, as we could now use raw data. In the original Tacotron, the spectrogram was passed into a vocoder which used the Griffin-Lim algorithm for speech synthesis. However, WaveNet produced more human-like voices, and so we have the topic of our video today. Replacing the old Griffin-Lim algorithm with a WaveNet-like vocoder in Tacotron Google has now come up with Tacotron 2. As mentioned at the beginning, the model architecture consists of two components. A network, which is a mix of both LSTM and CNN layers, to predict MEL spectrogram frames from input character sequences, and a variation of WaveNet to generate speech from predicted spectrogram frames. So why use MEL spectrogram as its intermediate form? We have two main reasons for this. It facilitates faster training of the network part and WaveNet modification part separately. And second, it emphasizes the recognition of lower frequency sounds over the bursts of high frequency auditory signals. This ensures that the spectrogram can be used to produce intelligible speech patterns, and this is the primary reason for its use over the years. An advantage of using MEL spectrograms is simplicity. However, it disregards information that would have been provided by linguistic and acoustic features used in the traditional WaveNet. Despite this lossy information, it is still possible to generate high-quality audio using MEL spectrograms and modified WaveNet. So let's take a look at the two components. Tacotron 2, like its predecessor, uses the short time Fourier series transforms to compute MEL spectrograms. This network consists of an encoder to convert character sequences to an internal feature representation, and a decoder to convert these internal feature representations to frames of the spectrogram. The input is a 512-dimensional vector of character embeddings. This is passed through three layers of convolution using a 5 cross 1 filter. Each layer is exceeded by batch normalization pass through a RALU activation function. The point of these convolution layers is to recognize n-grams, or phrases. The result is then passed into a bi-directional LSTM with 512 units to generate encoded features. The encoded features are passed into an attention unit, which converts the features into a fixed-length context vectors of size 128. This is the internal feature representation. From here on out, we have the decoder part. The prediction of the previous time step is first passed through a small prenet, which is basically two fully connected layers, each with 256 neurons and a ReLU activation. The prenet output and the attention context vector are concatenated by two unidirectional LSTM layers with 1024 neurons. The output is projected on a linear transform to get the predicted spectrogram frame. This is then passed to a postnet, which is essentially five convolutional layers, each followed by batch normalization and a 10H activation. This is done to enhance spectrogram frame prediction, which is then passed to the second component of Tacotron 2, that is, the modified wave net vocoder. The original WaveNet consisted of 30 dilated convolutional layers grouped into three dilated cycles. Such dilated convolution is much faster than the original convolution operation. 
It uses less parameters, captures a broad view of the input, and also captures more detail. This modification also uses Pixel CNN++, a generative model which more accurately models gradients in the spectrogram input for more sophisticated speech synthesis. More technically, it uses a 10-component mixture of logistic distributions to generate 16-bit samples at 24 kHz. WaveNet uses linguistic features, phoneme durations, and has a frame rate of 5 milliseconds. This modification, however, spreads the frames out with the 12.5 millisecond frame rate to resolve issues of predicting the spectrogram frames. The resulting system significantly outperforms all other text-to-speech systems, with its MOS, that is, mean opinion score, comparable to the ground truth. To prove this fact, let's consider some generated audio. We'll listen to two recordings, one by a human and the other by the AI. George Washington was the first president of the United States. Here's the other one. George Washington was the first president of the United States. Did you spot the differences? Now let's try another recording. That girl did a video about Star Wars lipstick. And the next one. That girl did a video about Star Wars lipstick. How about now? Could you tell which is human and which is machine? Well, I sure couldn't. The Texas speech system could also handle enunciation through capital letters. The buses aren't the problem, they actually provide a solution. The buses aren't the problem, they actually provide a solution. And there you have it, Google's new AI to synthesize speech that is as close to human voice thus far. It'll be interesting to see how new advancements take place in the field. But that's all I have for you now. If you liked the video, do me a favor and drop a like. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.